Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire, and today I'm coming to you from the very warm garage studio. I have been doing some demos out here uh, on video on my work table. I've got my bracket that I use for the overhead camera, and I've got my uh, really clean work table uh, surface that you can see right here that's always clean because nothing sticks to it and everything wipes off. I have searched far and wide for something like this and I can tell you I love it and I talk about it all the time but it's because I clearly love it. It's sold by the foot. I'll put a link below. It's uh, from Joggles and made by Ranger and it is um, a non-stick craft mat and that's why every video that I show you has got a nice clean area around it because I am a slob. So anyway, I've been working on some tutorials for you and this week I am going to teach you how to make some great fun patterns with Punchinello. Now Punchinello is um, the material that they also call sequin waste. Um, it's got some other names, but uh, it is a polka dot pattern and it's basically polka dots in mylar. So um, what could be better than polka dots? So let's check out Punchinello on the gel plate, making some fun polka dot patterns out here in the very warm garage studio. Welcome back. Today, we're gonna to be working with punchinella, or sequin waste, or punchinello. There's a lot of different words used to describe this material. Um, I'm gonna be using my gel plate, my golden fluid acrylics, and my brayer. And the punchinello, or sequin waste, is basically uh, what is left behind when they make sequins. So, hence the sequin waste and the punchinello, because they punch out the sequins out of this material and when they punch out the sequins this is what's left behind it's wonderful because it's a mylar material it's strong and sturdy like a stencil and it comes in all different sizes and shapes of sequins so it's a wonderful mask tool that you use on the gel plate just like a stencil and it is available on my amazon shopping resource page on a spool um probably more than you'll ever use in your life, but you could definitely share it with a friend. And also after a while of using it, it might get bent or torn or worn and you might like to cut a new piece. It might also get filled in with a lot of paint and you might like to cut a new piece. So I don't think it's bad to have a little uh, in the backup reserve. So I've got already done, already created some light colored solid sheets from my gel plate. So this one's not quite so light, but we can go over it with a darker contrast. And I'm making blue papers because I've got a blue bird on deck. So I am going to be doing a splendid fairy wren and he needs to have a lot of variety of blue and slightly bluish purple papers. And I love polka dots. Who doesn't love polka dots? So we're gonna start with these light blue solids and we're gonna go over them with the punchinella with a darker layer. So I'm gonna start with anthraquinone blue. That's really dark, so it'll probably go over our darkest solid. I'm gonna roll that out in a thin layer on the plate and then I am gonna put the punchinella into the paint. I'm gonna use the, this wide variety that I have. I'm gonna use all three different shapes and then I'm gonna come back with my, my darker blue. So this will be dark blue on dark blue. It'll be slightly, it'll be a subtle pattern, but it'll be something I can use in the darker values of the bird. So I'm just gonna use it just like a stencil. I'm gonna use the palm heel of my hand to press the paper down through the holes. I'm gonna pull it up to peak to make sure I got a good contact before I completely dismount the paper. I'm gonna add more pressure where I feel like I need to pick up more. And I'm gonna get a ghost print from this. So it's good that I have several solids ready to go because I'm gonna immediately pull a second print from this. So how fun is that? Three different polka dot patterns for my blue bird. So now I'm gonna lift the punchinello and I've got the reverse polka dot pattern ready to go. I'm gonna grab my I don't think I want to go that light. Oh, I've got to work quick before this dries. I'm going to grab this medium blue and grab that ghost print. Whoops. That's all right. Sometimes it sticks and it's okay if it tears because we're going to tear it up anyway. There, look at that. So a beautiful ghost print with the punchinello and a positive print. There's some great 
Splendid Fairy Wren papers. Now, the next thing I wanna show you is doing dots over dots. Why stop with one layer? So since this is already pretty dark, I could come back in with a teal and a little bit of permanent violet dark and create sort of a periwinkle color. I'm not gonna clean my brayer, so that's gonna introduce the blue. And I'm gonna get, I'm, anytime you're mixing colors, it's a good idea to swirl, swirl with the brayer and then roll. Otherwise you tend to get blotches. So you wanna swirl and then roll. And then you can blend your colors right here on the plate. And that's always an option to create colors that you don't have in your tubes or your containers. So there's a periwinkle blue. It's actually very similar to this background blue. So I'm gonna put the punchinello on in sort of a different manner here. And then I'm going to bring this paper and overlay another layer of dots upon dots upon dots. We can get more complex papers with more layers of texture and pattern, and they don't always have to be different techniques. You can layer the same technique over itself over and over again. So here I've introduced a second dot pattern and it's very similar to the base paper, so it's giving me a weird effect with like holes in it. So I'm gonna do one more layer here, but I'm gonna lift up this ghost print quickly and grab it onto this lighter blue. And that's a lovely light value, light to medium value polka dotted paper for my bird. And then on this one, I'm gonna go one more time. I'm gonna go with um, dioxidine purple, which is dark. And I'm gonna put into it a little bit of pearlescent. We give it a little pearl shimmer. So again, I'm not cleaning my brayer. That pearl shimmer is lightening up my dioxidine purple. So it's not quite as dark. And we'll see what that looks like over this. It may not be enough of a contrast, but we're gonna give it a try. So here again, I'm gonna lay the punchinello in different direction than it was on this paper and put that on top again. So this would be our third layer. That's a beautiful purple polka dot. Now I am tempted to bring in one more layer of the very dark anthraquinone blue to give more contrast to this. So I've got still some more paint down in there. It's too close to this color, but maybe not. This could be, you know, there's always a good um, usefulness for subtle pattern or subtle is the base for something else. But there's some more paint. Oh, I love that. Love that. Subtle purple on purple. Now we've got a ghost print lifting this up. Luckily, I've got another light colored solid, although this is a fragile paper that's going to want to stick to the plate. We'll see what happens. I'm a glutton for punishment. It already stuck once. There, careful dismount. And I've transferred that purple to another blue. I'm gonna have an abundance of blue polka dotted paper. So my last layer, I'm gonna bring back in the anthraquinone blue, which is very dark. It's not as dark as it could be because it got purple in the brayer. So I'm gonna bring in some of this dark dioxidine purple See if we can darken that down a bit because I want a high contrast. Swirling and rolling. Now we've got dark purple again. The blue got absorbed by the purple. And hopefully it's a dark enough contrast to get one more layer of polka dots to show up. So let's lay this in a different way than we did last time. And add this for our fourth. Who's keeping track? Our fourth layer, I believe, of Punchinello. Now you could also layer this with stencils. You could layer it with other techniques such as stamping or splattering or texture plates or all kinds of different things. And I am making a purple mess. Ah, here we go. Look at the richness of that. Layer, layer, layer. That is going to be a beautiful paper for the dark area. Um, but I've got a ghost print left over that's dry. So I'm going to come in with some manganese blue. 
I'm gonna clean my brayer so I can get that purple out of the brayer. Hopefully, most of it. And I'm putting this manganese blue right over my ghost print of the purple punchinella dots. And this time I'm gonna pull them together on a sheet of rice paper. And there's our last layer of very subtle ghost printed punchinella dots. So we got quite a range of different papers from one set of punchinella. Look at how quickly we made all that paper. Happy Friday and thank you for being here.